we're going to briefly go over each type of conic and how to get them into standard form as well as how to graph them. So we're going to start with circles, number one on your packet. Uh, so for this circle, first of all, we can tell that it's a circle because the x squared and the y squared have the same sign and the same coefficient. So that makes it a circle. So what we need to do first is get this into standard form. So we're going to group up the x terms together, x squared plus 6x. And then we're going to group up the y terms, y squared plus 2y. And then we're going to move the constant term over to the left. So that's going to be equals negative 1. So now we need to complete the square on the x's, add a blank for the x's to both sides, and we're going to complete the squares for the y, add a blank on both sides for that as well. So for the x's we need to add 9 to both sides, and then for the y's we need to add 1. And again that formula, if you don't know it yet, is b over 2 squared to get the number that you add. So now we're going to put these in factored form. For the x's, it's going to be x plus 3 squared. And then for the y's, we have y plus 1 squared. And then over here, when we add these together, we just get 9. <clears throat> so this is uh, our standard form for the circle. Remember that uh, standard form setup, x minus h squared plus y minus k squared equals r squared. So the center for this one, the center is h and k. So for this problem, the center is negative 3, negative 1. And the radius, if 9 is r squared, then the radius must be 3. We take the square root of that value to get the radius. So now we just plot this. The center is at negative 3, negative 1 right here. And then the radius is 3, so we're just going to go out 3 in all directions. and plot those points, and then that's going to give us the shape of our circle. Ooh, beautiful circle. All right, you can pause the video here and do numbers two and three, and then uh, go on to the next section where we'll talk about ellipses. This next section is ellipses. You can tell that it's ellipse because the uh, x squared and y squared are the same sign, but they have a different coefficient. So this is going to be an ellipse. Remember the standard form for an ellipse. We have x minus h squared over a squared plus y minus k squared over b squared equals 1. So that's the form we're trying to get this into. So we're going to uh, start the same way as we did with the circles. We're going to group up the x terms, which for this one, there's only one x term, just 9x squared. And then we're going to group up those two y terms as well, 49y squared minus 196y. And then we're going to move this constant term over to the right side, equals 245. So now we need to factor out the leading coefficient for each variable. So for the x, my coefficient is just 9. So we're just going to take the 9 and just keep it in front. And since x, is our own, x squared is our only x term, we're just going to put it by itself because there's nothing else to put in with it. And then we're going to take out the 49 from the y's. So that's going to leave us with y squared minus 4y when you divide that. <clears throat> equals 245. So now we're going to divide all three of these pieces. We're going to divide by the product of the two numbers that we took out. So that's 9 times 49. And 9 times 49 is 441. So you can also write that as 441. But to make it a little simpler, I'm just going to write it as 9 times 49. <coughs> and then over here, I can just write it as 441. So here my 9's will cancel and my 49's will cancel here. So we're left with x squared over 49 <coughs> plus y squared minus 4y over 9. <coughs> 
excuse me, can't stop coughing. And then 245 over 441. So now we need to complete the square on the y variables. <coughs> so we're going to add a blank there. And that same blank is going to go on the other side. And we have to keep the denominator. We have a 9 on the bottom. So we're going to keep the 9 there. <coughs> Excuse me, I'm sorry. Notice that we did not add a blank for the x's. That's because x squared is our only x variable, which means we're not required to <clears throat> we're not required to complete the square on the x's, only on the y's. <clears throat> so we need to add a four to complete the square on the y's, and then that four over nine on the other side. <coughs> And finally, we'll get this into factored form. So we have x squared over 49 plus, in factored form here, this is y minus 2 squared over 9. And then actually when you add these two <coughs> fractions together, those just add up to 1. So it equals 1. <coughs> and once it equals 1, then that's as far as we have to go, and that is considered in standard form. So now to graph this, we need to find our center, <coughs> which is H and K. So for this one, the H is 0, and the K is 2. And we also need our A, B, and C so that we can find our um, vertices and our focus points. So remember that a is always under the x, a squared is underneath the x. So if a squared is 49, then a is 7. b squared is 9, so that means b is 3. And then to find c, we're going to use the formula for ellipses, which is a squared equals b squared plus c squared. So when we plug those in, we get 49 equals 9 plus c squared. So we subtract the 9, and then we just take the square root of 40 to get our c. So c is the square root of 40, which is approximately 6.3 <clears throat> when you calculate that out. So now we're ready to plot our ellipse. So we start with the center at 0, 2, which is right here. The A value is always our horizontal distance. So from the center horizontally out to the, ver to the vertices, we're going to go out 7 in each direction. So 7 and over to negative 7. And then for the B, that's our vertical distance. So we're going to go up 3 and down 3 from the center. And those are our vertices. So that gives us the actual shape of our ellipse. Whoops. Close enough. And then we can plot our focus points using the C. So C is 6.3, which is about here, and then in the other direction as well. So then to list our coordinates, uh, I believe the instructions ask you to list the coordinates of the vertices which would be at, this one would be negative, negative 7, 0. <clears throat> this one is at 0, 5, 7, 0, and negative 1, or sorry, 0, negative 1. And then our focus points, these two focus points, we've got negative 6.3, 0, and then positive 6.3 zero <clears throat> for all of those coordinates. So that's our ellipse. You can go ahead and pause the video and do numbers five and six in your packet. Convert those to standard form, just like we did on this one, and then graph them on the graph. Next up is going to be hyperbolas. So for hyperbolas, remember that the standard form is 
x minus h squared over a squared minus y minus k squared over b squared equals 1. Or, <clears throat> or uh, if it's going the other direction, then the y part will come first, y minus k squared over b squared minus <clears throat> x minus h squared over a squared equals 1. So these are both considered standard form. It just depends on which variable is po positive and which one is negative. So to convert this to standard form, we need to group up our variables just like we've done on every other kind of conic. Um, but we're going to put the one that's positive first. So in this equation, the y squared is the one that's positive. So we're going to group up the y's first. We have y squared minus 6y. And then we have our x's, minus 4x squared plus 16x. And we're just going to move that 11 over to the other side. <clears throat> so now we need to factor out our leading coefficients. For the y's, the y squared doesn't have a coefficient, so we can just think of that as a 1. Uh, I'm just going to write the 1 just as a placeholder, but you don't have to write the 1. If it only has a 1, uh, then you don't really have to write that you're factoring out a 1. For the x's, I'm going to take out the negative 4. Remember that when you factor out the negative 4, you have to remember to divide by a negative on this second term. So positive 16x when we take out the negative 4, that's going to become minus 4x equals 11. So now we're going to divide everything by 4, 4 times 1, which is just 4. So these 4s are going to cancel out. So I still have my denominator here, y squared minus 6y over 4 minus x squared minus 4x, and I'm just going to put a 1 down there just as a placeholder so that I have something there, and then that equals 11 over 4. <clears throat> so I left these spaces because the next step is going to be to complete the square. So for the y's, I'm going to add a 9 here, which means I'm going to add a 9 over 4 here, okay, and then for the x's, I'm going to add a 4 here, so that means I need, on this side, I need to bring this negative along with the 4. So that's going to be minus 4 over 1, which is just 4. So then when we add all these together, 11 over 4 plus 9 over 4 is 20 over 4, which is 5. <clears throat> so then we have 5 minus 4, which is 1. So this side now equals 1. And then we have our factored form here. So y minus 3 squared over 4, and x minus 2 squared over 1. So this is going to fit into this standard form of our hyperbola because the y comes first. The y is the one that's positive. So whenever we graph this, uh, this one's going to be a vertical hyperbola. The, in, the vertices are going to be going up and down from the center. So we need to find our center. The center is HK, as it always is, which in this case is 2, 3. And then our A, B, and C. So A is always under the X, remember, so A is 1 on this one. B is 2. And then C, <clears throat> for hyperbolas, we use uh, a different formula, A squared plus B squared equals c squared for hyperbolas. So when we plug that in, we get 4 plus 1, uh, which is 5, equals c squared. So the square root of 5 is approximately 2.2. So that's what we get for the c as our foci. So to plot this, we go to the center first. The center is at 2, 3. We plot that first. Okay, we're going to use our A and B values to plot out that rectangle that we draw. That's going to help us draw in those asymptotes. So the A is 1. We go out 1 in each direction. And then the B is 2. We're going to go 2. And that's where our box is going to be. Drawing in that box. So then we can uh, draw in our asymptotes.
those are just the diagonals that go through that box. <clears throat> now, since this was a vertical hyperbola, since the y comes first, that means that my vertices are going to be on the vertical axis from the center. So these two points are going to be my vertex points. So my vertices are 2, 1 and 2, 5. And that means that our hyperbola is going to go out like this. Whoops. And then finally, we need to plot our center. I mean, not our center, sorry, our foci. Uh, so our foci, we're going to use the C. C is 2.2. .2, so we're going to go 2.2 .2 units out from the center. And that's going to be right there and right there. So the foci are at 2. And then since this was... 0.2 units down, if I'm counting up, that's going to be 0.8, so 0.8 there. And then the other focus point is at 2, and this is 5.2. And you can always calculate your foci just by taking your center and adding and subtracting the C value to whichever coordinate applies. So in this case, we kept the X coordinate the same from the center, and we add and subtract C to the Y value. So 3 plus 2.2 .2 is 5.2, and 3 minus 2.2 .2 is where we get the 0.8 for the other point. <clears throat> so that's our hyperbola. You can pause the video and go on to numbers 8 and 9 in your packet and graph uh, those hyperbolas, convert them to standard form and graph them. And then the last section is going to be parabolas. All right, on to parabolas. So with parabolas, there's only one squared term. So what we need to do is get whichever term is squared, we need to get those terms on the left and get everything else on the right. So for this, we've got negative x squared plus 6x equals, we're going to move these terms over, so that's negative 2y plus 17. Now, I can't complete the square if there's a negative in front. So what I'm going to do is basically change all the signs. I'm going to multiply this whole equation by negative 1 just so that I can have a positive on my x squared. So that's going to just change all the signs. This is now x squared minus 6x, and that becomes a positive 2y minus 17. All right, so now we need to complete the square. So we're going to add our blank to both sides. To complete this square on the x's, we need to add 9. b over 2 squared gives us 9. So then that's going to give me my factored form over here, x minus 3 squared, and then 2y. Negative 17 plus 9 is negative 8. <clears throat> so now the last step to get this uh, into the standard form, we need to factor out the 2, and that will be y minus 4, and then this side stays the same. So we're comparing that to our standard form for the parabola, which is x minus h squared equals 4p times y minus k. And of course, these can be swapped if, uh, if the parabola is opening the other way. <clears throat> so for this one, since my x is squared, I know that it's going to be opening either up or down. And since this number is positive, that tells me it's going to open up. So it's going to open up. My vertex is my h and k. So that's 3, 4 for this one. And my p-value, that's what we're going to use to find everything else, my p-value on this. So remember, this is 4p. So if 4p is 2, then that means that our p is 1 half. <clears throat> we can write that as 1 half, or you can write it as 0.5, however you prefer. So now we're going to start plotting all of this on the graph. So the vertex is at 3, 4. Okay, and we said it's opening up, so I'm going to go up by 0.5, and that's going to be where my focus is, up by 0.5. Okay, and then we go down by 0.5, and that's going to be the directrix. Okay. 
So to get those listed out, the focus point <clears throat> is at 3, 4.5. And then the directrix is horizontal, so it's y equals 3.5. This is 3.5. All right, so the length of our focal cord, that's what we need to do next in order to graph this. The length of our focal cord is just whatever this number is, absolute value of that number. So in this case, our focal cord is two units long, which means from the focus, we're going to go out each direction by one unit and plot those points. And that's going to be what we use to sketch our graph. So it should look something like that. And then finally, the axis of symmetry goes right through the middle. So the axis of symmetry on this is vertical. So it's x equals 3. <clears throat> All right, so that is the last of the conics. Go ahead and do numbers 11 and 12 in your packet. Um, for those parabolas, finish that out. And then... Um, Anything that you still need help with, you're welcome to come ask me and I will be happy to help you.